my name is uh, Amir Rahiman. So today, um, I would like to present about the introductions. So the conference of Korea has its origins in the 1897 the verb the Council of Royal for the Federal Malay States, which were not under the British colonial regime. So the British playing the advisory role on only a very few administrative items and the full authorities to govern remaining with the Sultan of those states. Only the four federal Malay states of um, Perak, Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, and um, Pahang were represented at the Durbar, which was uh, com convened in 1897. So the purpose of the Durbar, as uh, described by residents General Frank Swenterhams, was to bring home to the Malays in the most striking manner possible the reality of federation so the after world war ii a similar body called the council of sultan was constituted under the short-lived malayan unions so that's all hello my name is muhammad izam bin Asun, and i will continue uh, for the introduction that amir alaiman just present just now uh, so the council comprised uh, the governance of the union who uh, act as president. The nine rulers and the chief secretary, attorney general and financial sec uh, secretary as the uh, ex-official members. The sole functions of the council were to consider legislation related to Islam a function carried out by the uh, subcommittee of the council so uh, uh, comprising only the muslims member and the advice the governor of the union of the ruler of any state as necessary so the first conference of rulers uh, was convened on 31st august 1948 the year uh, the British established the semi autonomous federation of Malaya, Malaya uh, where it was uh, attended by the rulers of all nine Malay states. The conference of rulers continued after independence when it was formally. Hi, the objective is a principal function of the conference of rulers is the consultation that proves to the king on the appointment of a judge high court of the high court the court of appeal and the federal court uh, furthermore the appointment of the four office bearers the judiciary um, who are the Chief Justice President of the Court of Appeal. So the background of Malay rulers, nine of the state in Malaysia are constitutionally headed by the traditional Malay rulers, collective referred to as the Malay states. State constitutions limit eligibility for the thrones to male, Malay, Muslim or royal descent. Seven are hereditary monarchies based on agnetic primoniture which is Kedah, Kelantan, Johor, Perlis, Pahang, Selangor and Terengganu. In Perak, the throne rotates among three branches of the royal family loosely based on agnetic seniority. One state, which is Negeri Sembilan, is an elective monarchy. The ruler is uh, elected from the from male members members of the royal family by hereditary chiefs. All rulers except those of Belize and Negeri Sembilan use the title of Sultan. 
the ruler of Belis is styled by the style of the Raja, whereas the ruler of Negeri Sembilan is known as the Yang di Pertuan Besar. So every five years, or when in a vacancy of the rulers convene as the conference of rulers, which is Malay Majlis, which is Majlis Raja Raja, to elect among themselves Yang di Pertuan Agong of the Federal Constitutional Monarch and Head of State of Malaysia as the Yang Dipertuan Agong is elected among the rulers Malaysia as a whole country is also an elective monarchy Thank you Hello, my name is Mama Izzam Bin Rasun and today I will talk about uh, I will explain about the rules and function of Malay rulers each of uh, as you can see each of the nine rulers serve as the head of state of his own state as well as the head of the religion of Islam in the state as with uh, as with other constitutional monarchs around the world uh, the rulers do not participate in the actual governance in their states. Instead, each of them is bound by convention to act on the uh, on the advice of the head of government on of the state. So, it is known as Menteri Besar. However, the ruler of each state has uh, discretionary powers in appointing the Menteri Besar that commands a majority in the state legis legislative assembly and refusing a dissolution uh, of the state assembly when represented by the Menteri Besar. So the powers of uh, the monarch have been uh, restricted over time uh, although there is a debate about the precise limits of uh, their powers. And the young Pertuan Agong is the federal uh, head of state. Hi, Assalamualaikum and good evening. My name is Mama Azimi Chemat from Diploma in Management Student. Today, I want to explain my part and the my part is the roles of Yang Di Pertuan Agong. The Yang Di, the Yang Di Pertuan Agong has a role in all three branches of of the government which are executive, legal and judiciary as stipulated in the federal constitution. In the executive branch, His Majesty has the power to appoint the Prime Minister and to refuse a Prime Minister request to dissolve the Parliament. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong can also call a meeting with the Conference of Rulers Consent solely with the privileged position, humors, and dignities of their Royal Highness. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong also has a significant role in appointing an Atame General and Judge based on, the, based on the advice of the Prime Minister. He is also given the power to grant MST or delay sentencing on any crime try try in the military court and crimes committed with within the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong is also the commander of chief commander of in chief of the armed force in addition to being the head of Islam in the four state rule by appoint, <coughs> appoint, appointed governments 
in the three federal territories as well as in in his own state that's all from me thank you okay for the role of function of the conference of ruler okay the main thing is the national library has called to conference of ruler the supreme situation of country which is will you mean uh, even parliament of subordinate to it however the role is defendant legacy symbolic even election of a young people to agong generally follow the fixed order seniority of malaysia ruler at the time independence in 1957 okay in policy making the conference of ruler involved yang di pertuan agong is constitutionally requiring consent with not only prime minister in at the member conference but also with the menteri besar is called chief minister of each state hello so for the conclusion the existence of the constitutional monarchy in malaysia is closely related and in line of the development of the malay uh, civilization all communities in malaysia accept the existence of the constitutional monarchy as tradition in the malaysian uh, uh, malaysian political system and are articulated clearly in the constitution thus the kings uh, need to scrap the perception um, that their subject are only their slaves while the people need to have a relationship uh, view of the king as said in the constitution hence uh, the constitutional monarchy will be viewed but uh, will be valued uh, more in the present and becomes more significant in the future so that's all thank you Thank <laughs> you.